Hey everybody, it's me again, and it is 10 before 1 in the afternoon on Wednesday, and I'm back in my parents' driveway, got here early this morning, I'm um, doing a bunch of laundry, and just generally doing a bunch of chores around the van, getting everything cleaned up, and ready for another uh, week or two out in the woods. Uh, anyways, what I wanted to talk to you about today is power consumption. And for any of you who are watching my channel, and there's not very many of you, uh, who are researching van dwelling or are just getting started van dwelling, one of the most important decisions that you will have to make is deciding how much electrical power you are going to need to be comfortable in the van. Now, it could be any appliance that you want, uh, refrigerators, heaters, um, dehumidifiers, or coffee machines in my case I can't live without coffee in the morning and a way that you can judge um, power consumption is by getting one of these that is called a kilowatt and what a kilowatt does is that it meters how much power any given appliance will use and the idea is you plug this into the wall and then you plug whatever appliance that you're trying to test into there and then you turn it on uh, and you see or this will tell you how many watts, volts, amps, kilowatt hours that whatever appliance you want uh, is going to use and that also includes laptops, battery chargers, whatever and there, from there uh, using a little bit of math you can figure out how, uh, how big your battery bank has to be how big of an inverter you're going to need uh, to take the 12 volts up to 110 uh, and how much solar you're going to need to to put on the roof to power all of that or to charge it. So that's a little tip there guys. Um, I used that kilowatt when I first moved in the van and I saw exactly how much power my laptop was using, my the coffee machine, and I got the appropriate amount of batteries, whatever, and it always worked great. Um, a, about a month and a half ago, I guess, I was watching another YouTuber called Hobbs Ventures and he did a review of the Road Pro tornado fan. Now it was good timing because my old Walmart $9 fan was starting to make some bearing noises so I figure he seemed to really love it so I decided to go ahead and give her a go and it was like uh, $25 uh, on Amazon so I used a, a little bit of my Amer American Express points on it and got it and when it came in the mail I hooked it up and he's absolutely right that thing can push a lot of air but what drew my attention was when I looked at the power plug and saw its power rating it said 10 amps and it doesn't mean that it will use 10 amps it just means it has the capability of using 10 amps my cheap Walmart fan um, has a rating of 1 amp so I thought that was kind of unusual so I decided I was going to go ahead and test the 12 volt appliances to see how much power they really really use um, and so I went down to the electronics store and I got one of these super cheap five dollar volt and amp meter or volt and amp meter words it's something that I'm having problems with today um, and a 50 amp shunt uh, in case I run into something which uh, uses up a lot of power and won't blow up the meter and uh, the case here uh, I just salvaged that out of my mom's recycling bin uh, and this out of the trash, this old 12 volt plug. Anyways, so with no further ado, let's see how well this works. See there's the tornado fan there, my cheap Walmart fan. So plug it in, plug everything in, here's my adapter, turn it on. So 12.4 volts, 0 amps, let's turn on the Walmart fan first. And it looks like uh, less than half an amp to run it. Now, I don't know how accurate this is, guys. Um, I know it has to be somewhat accurate because inside here, actually, there's only a 3 amp fuse. So I know it can't be wildly inaccurate. There you go. All right, so let's go ahead and turn that off. Switch around the plug. Whoops. Darn it. Let's 
challenge to do with one hand. Okay. Come on. Darn it. There we go. So the tornado fan. Let's see a full pelt. 1.1 amps. It has to be somewhat accurate based on the fusible or the fuse that's in the uh, plug there. All right. So if anybody else is interested in buying or not buying, but making one of these, uh, shoot me an email and I'll give you the uh, wiring diagram for that. It's super duper easy. So yeah, that's where we are. Let's turn that off. Things loud. All right. See you later, guys.